Hey everybody, I'm Amanda with DevExpress and welcome to today's webinar, Dashboards for the Web and Tablet, presented by DevExpress Program Manager, Seth Juarez. Creating powerful dashboards is an essential business skill. In this webinar, see how to create and lay out an informative dashboard, complete with filtering and drill down. Also learn how to prepare the dashboard for consumption on both the web and tablet devices. There will be a Q&A session at the end of this presentation, but feel free to enter your questions at any time in the questions section of your GoToWebinar control panel. And again, thank you so much for joining us. I will now hand things over to Seth Juarez. Hello, everybody. My name is Seth Juarez. And as always, if you should have any questions, feel free to just ask them in the question box. I, I love questions. It's probably my favorite part of these webinars that I get to answer questions and I'll tell you that as a program manager I do have influence on the direction of the product and so if you have any commentary I want to hear it whether for good or for bad so again please any questions today we're going to talk about dashboards particularly how to visualize them on the web and by extension tablet devices and I'll show you how to do that first what we'll do is we'll let me get these slides going here. We'll go over some definitions. Then I'll show you how to create a dashboard designer using our tools. I'll show you how to work with our dashboard elements. Uh, I'll show you what elements exist, and I'll show you how to do drill down and filtering. Next, we'll talk about some principles for creating an effective dashboard. And then finally, we're going to visualize these dashboards for the web and tablet devices. I, I, don't, I should have put devices at the end of that, but I... For some reason, I didn't, so I apologize. So the first question is, well, what is a dashboard? And as you know, pictures like this sort of pop up to sort of help you understand what a dashboard is. When I look at a dashboard, the, the, the thing that I think about is my car. And when you're driving, there are certain things that you need to know all the time when you're driving. And so the question that I put to you is, why is this an effective dashboard? Well, because it shows you the most essential information at a single glance. Now, there are other types of dashboards that are probably more complicated. And so we need to remember that if we're going to make a dashboard, we need to suit it, or we need to make sure that it's suited to the people that are going to look at it. Because this dashboard, I have no idea what these things are, are doing. Finally, I'll tell you, that sometimes the metaphor does not translate well to a computer. Just because there is a spin dial in or a, or a gauge inside of your dashboard does not necessarily require to have that same kind of gauge in your software. The metaphor sometimes just doesn't work, but the principle does. A dashboard is primarily a visual display of the most important information needed to achieve one or more objectives, which fits entirely on a single computer screen, so it can be monitored at a glance. This isn't mine. I'll have to find the book. I, if you Make sure at the end, if you want to know what book I got this out of, I'll tell you. But it's really there. Dashboards are really there to answer questions. And you need to find the best, best visualization for the questions that you're going to ask. And so it's really not all about making it look exactly like a car dashboard. It's about answering questions. Okay, so uh, for the first part, we're going to make a dashboard designer here. So let me get this going. Here is Visual Studio. I'm going to create a brand new project. I am going to use a Windows Forms application, and I'm going to call it my uh, demo. Let's call it our, our dashboard project. And then I'm going to hit OK. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to use, well, you know, I'm kind of OCD, and so I always change this to our main form. Hit yes. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the toolbox and look for the form assistant. I'll double click on that. There it is, and then I'll go to the form assistant and convert it to a ribbon form so that it looks a little bit better. There you go. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the ribbon just to make it look a little nicer because I don't like this round thing. Some people do. I don't. I'm going to change the ribbon style to Office 2013. There you go. 
And then what I'm going to do is I am going to go to the toolbox and drag a dashboard designer onto the design surface. Now, what's going to happen here is that the DevExpress gerbils are going to go and they're going to start to add some of the references. It's going to start to add some of the code that you need in the background to get this to work and it's going to drop this form right onto the surface. Next, I'm going to go to the smart tag. I'm going to dock in the parent container and then I'm going to create the ribbon. Now again, when we actually create the ribbon, this is actually writing some code for you and uh, generating all of these things that are going on. Hold on, let me, for some reason I have things coming apologize for that. Someone's, uh, someone's DMing me or something. All right, so let's go to the ribbon and let's take this one out because we don't need it. And now you can see that I have created literally an entire dashboard designer in not very much time. I can just run it now. All right, as it's starting up, Notice that we have created all of the ribbon items. We have created the layout items for all of the particular tools. And now it's just a question of it starting up. Let me close this. Again, the DevExpress gerbils are working in the background to get this all up and running. Uh oh. I might have just updated Visual Studio. I, I think I just upgraded it to version 3. So as it's sitting there busily, happily working, and as it comes up, let me go back to the slides. And it'll hopefully it'll pop up and we can just look at it. Otherwise, I'll just keep looking at the taskbar. Uh, Visual Studio is busy. And what happened is I just upgraded to the latest, to the latest, the latest bug. Uh, not latest bug, the latest... Uh, version. So I apologize for that. Okay, so let's go back to the slides and as it's coming up, let's talk about dashboard elements. There are three different things that we need to think about when we're looking at dashboard elements. The first has to do with what data is going into the actual visualization. The second thing has to do with how we interact with those visualizations, and the last is how these visualizations are styled. Let's go back and see if this is still, yeah, I'm still thinking about it. So those are the three sort of things that we need to consider when looking at dashboard elements. Also, let's talk about the dashboard elements that are available. Primarily, there's a couple that are fairly similar, right? The, these, these guys are, are very similar to to each other. This is the, the oddball out and then there's sort of a substrate inside of this that, that's a little bit different. So all of these elements are designed to display information. This one is designed to display information and allow you to use it as a filter. So by default this is always going to be a filter. These ones can also be filters but again are designed primarily to display information. Okay, so uh, let's go back to the Visual Studio, and I think it started to run. There it is. Again, sorry about that. I, I think I just upgraded to something, and then it's, it went weird on me. So now that we're, now that we've uh, we've seen this, let's look at working with these dashboard elements. Again, we're using the the, the tool that we just, we just uh, created, the designer we just created, and the first thing to note is that we need to hook it up to some data. And so we're going to use this little section here to do that. So let me hit new data source. And I'm going to call it our analysis, analysis uh, data source. Hit next. We're going to choose a the analysis database and hit next. And then we're going to hit support. So again, we're working with, with dashboard elements. And so let me show you how you do that. So we're just going to work with one because, again, the next steps that we're going to look at is how to actually think about creating a dashboard. So to create a dashboard element, you just click on it, right? This section right here has to do with the data that's going to show up. This is the data that's going to show up. 
This section right here has to do with how we interact with the data. And then last but not least, this section right here has to do with how, what the data looks like or what sort of style we want to use. For a chart, there are a number of different settings that you can do. You can, you can have different kinds of chart types, for example. Additionally, notice that you can change those, those here if you'd like, but again, the crux of the matter is we're working with the data that goes into the dashboard, how we interact with the data, and what the data looks like. Those are really the three key elements when working with a dashboard. Okay, uh, let's talk about how we create an effective dashboard. Now the data, let me show you what the data is so that you can get a good feel for what we're looking at. Uh oh, we want to connect to uh, a database engine, so let me hit connect. Let me go to database and let me open the analysis database and let's go to the tables. And let me open, let me just get a thousand rows. So as I, let me move this out of the way so you can see the data. The data is just this. And, and once you look at the data, you'll see what kind of questions we're going to ask. This is just a flattened table that has a list of tickets that were created for a particular company. It has a product name. Oh, let me, let me, uh, zoom in here so you can see it. It has a product name. It has who uh, serviced the ticket or who, or who actually uh, closed the ticket. We have the customer that initiated the ticket. We have an issue type. We have when it was open, how long it took to resolve, and how long we want it to take to resolve. So the resolve time is how the actual, the target resolve time is, is how long it should have taken to do that, to resolve it. So when looking at this type of data, there are a number of questions that we're going to want to answer. So before we even begin to create a dashboard, we want to have a series of questions. It's imperative that we have those first. What's going to happen is we're going to, we're going to spend all of this effort making a dashboard only for people to say it's not good enough, and then we're going to start asking questions. I suggest you start asking questions first. What questions do we want to answer? Well. For this particular database, what we want to know is we want to know how quickly do we answer support tickets. That's the first. The second is who are our outstanding support engineers? In other words, who's doing the best job at closing tickets? Next is are we giving adequate priority to serious tickets? You recall that in our tables we have different issue types. Some of them are critical, some of them are urgent, and some of them are normal. And so we want to know, are we answering the questions fast enough? So are we giving adequate priority to serious tickets? Next, who asks the most questions? And we're, these again, these are questions that we're going to answer. And finally, which products require the most support? So again, with those questions in mind, let's create a dashboard. And you'll see that, that once we have these questions, they'll guide us to sort of the best practices for creating an effective dashboard. Okay, let's go back to our program here. Notice that we have, uh, our it's the same form we had before, but we're gonna use this now for the balance of this particular webinar. Okay, so the first question is how, the, how quickly do we answer support tickets? So I'm going to go ahead and use this chart. And what I'm going to do is I am going to I'm going to take this particular uh, this chart and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the resolve time and I'm going to take the average resolve time and drop it on there. Notice I kind of did this kind of fast because I'm, I'm kind of used to it so I apologize. What I'm going to do is again I'm going to take the the item that I want to show and the values are sort of the Y value of what we're going to show. Notice it automatically is going to say we're going to use the sum. I'm going to change that to average. Now, again, one of the principles that we have when designing this particular tool is we are going to make some guesses about what it is that you mean when you do stuff. And so when you drop something onto the values pane, we're just going to draw the first thing that occurs to us. Turns out that we're going to use the sum and we're going to use a bar chart. 
And what that does is it allows you to be successful quickly. Notice how quickly I did it. In fact, I wasn't even thinking about it the first time. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go and take the open date and set it as the argument. Again, notice the visualization that we have. Very quick, very, very powerful. But what if I want to show the month and year? Notice that we can change that right away. In our, when we're looking at, at values, notice we're trying to be clever about what it is that you want to show. We, there's really only so much you can do with this particular data type. And so we're going to, we're going to show that to you. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go here to the uh, series type, again, to change the layout and style, and I'm going to change it to a plot line. Very good. Next, what I'm going to do is maybe I can, maybe I can go here and I can change this to month instead and then leave this at year. Notice what's starting to happen is that we're starting to get sort of a stacked approach. Notice that, again, the resolve time is an indication of how fast we're closing tickets. And it looks like overall in the year 2012, we're doing a little bit better than we were in 2011 with the exception of this particular point in August, which where it's equal. So notice that we're really starting to get some answers. And not only are we starting to get some answers to the question of how quickly do we answer support ticket, which happens to be on average uh, somewhere between 14 and 16, somewhere in that range, Notice that we're starting to answer other questions that perhaps we did not intend, but using that as our guideline is pretty powerful. Let's right click and go to edit names and let's change this to uh, resolve time, uh, average resolve time. And then we're going to go down here and take, take open out and then we're going we're gonna to take this out and just say average resolution and hit OK. Now notice it's starting to look a lot better. We can also save it. So I'm going to hit save and on the desktop I'm going to create this support.xml file that has the dashboard definition in there. Now let me go to the taskbar and let me let me try to open up this this thing. So let me let me go to uh, file explorer one second. I always have like this thing where I don't want to close. Uh, I don't want to close uh, the the presentation, but then it always gets in the way. So let's go there and let's go to the actual dashboard. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to say open with Sublime Text and, and take a look at what we're creating. This is very readable, right? Notice that our data source is right here. We have a connection. We have some some uh, fields in there. And then we're starting to get into our chart and what data members we're using, et cetera. And so again, this is just, just plain XML when we do that. Okay, let's go back to the form. And now that we've answered the first question, let's answer the second question. Who are our outstanding support engineers? Now, there's a number of ways to do that. I am gonna choose the grid that's because it's, it's another one, and it's going to answer the question, but it's also going to show you a different, uh, a different dashboard element. So the first dimension, obviously, is going to be our employee, because that's going to tell us who is doing well and who isn't. The next thing I'm going to do is I am going to drop on an issue type. And the issue type is really tells us a little bit about what kind of issues they've been working on. So notice, notice that for the employee, there's a, they all sort of have all three. The last thing I want to do is I want to put, put in the resolve time. And again, we're going to use the average. Uh, I'm sorry, let me, let me go here and select average. Okay, so now that we know, we know the employee, we know on average how long they've taken, but it would be great to know if they were over or under the target resolve time. So let's go to this sum, and I'm going to choose a delta instead and hit apply. Notice that we have the resolve time, and now we can have a target. So I'll drop that on there, make sure that it's set to average, and there you go. So notice that on average, David Bradley is plus 1.51 hours. 
Again, think about this though. This is bad because David Bradley is overtime rather than undertime. So it turns out that less is better. So let's fix that. And let's go to result indication and let's change to less is good. And then hit apply. Again, the color red is going to sort of pre-attentively tell us something is bad. The color green is going to tell us something is good. So overall, as we sort this, the majority of people seem to be over. But in particular cases, like Saria is under. And so we can see here's our best support engineers. Now, let's change some names here. So let's go to edit names. And let's change to employee statistics. And let's change resolve time to over under, right? So that's going to be a little bit better. Uh, and then we're going to change this to type and hit OK. And so now notice it's starting to look pretty interesting. OK, now let's take a look at, because I, I, I've done already, I've shown you how to work with data. I've showed you how to do layout and style. So notice you can, you can merge cells. Notice what that does. It helps with sort of the visualizations. Notice you can, you can add banding to the rows. So you can see the banding going on there. You can, you can remove the column headers. You can remove the horizontal lines or the vertical lines if you choose. I'm just going to remove the horizontal lines since this is going to help. So again, notice that we, we play with this style. Now let's talk about the data section. The first thing that I'm going to do is I am going to initiate drill down. Now, the order that this is in is very important. So now, notice when I click drill down, automatically you're going to see just the employees. When I double click, notice that it's going to drill down into their three different, uh, their three different types that they have. So let, and, and you can use this button to drill back out. So that's how drill down works uh, for this particular uh, thing. And I'll show you drill down in other instances as well, if that helps. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use what's called master filter. So now let me single click on Gale. Notice that this changes. The master filter, what it does is it allows you to filter on data for the entire dashboard. So when I click on Gale Erickson, notice that it's showing tickets only for her. Or when I go to Terry Duffy, it's showing tickets only for this person, right? Notice that overall, it seems like everyone's doing better in 2012, with some exceptions. Notice that Susan's having a tr some trouble in August. But you're starting to get some really, really good uh, sort of metrics on each employee. Again, the question that, we're, that we were answering with this dashboard element is, who are our outstanding support engineers? Okay, so notice we've, we've initiated drill down. And now notice that we're looking at Joseph Goldberg, but only for their urgent tickets. And you can see that sort of happening pretty quickly. Okay, let's clear the master filter and let's move on to the next question. The next question is, are we giving adequate priority to serious tickets? I'm gonna go ahead and use the pipe, if that's okay. And then I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start to move things around. So I'll move that over there, and then I'll move this over here. Uh, no, I want to move it a little bit farther up. So let me bring it down, uh, 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 like so. I don't know if that works either. Let, let me just put it here to the side, and then we'll we'll fix this a little bit later. Again, the screen size makes it a little bit of a challenge, but you know, not too much. We'll put something over here later. So for the pie chart, notice that we want to stick, take a look at uh, priority to serious tickets. So what I'm gonna do is I am going to, uh, for the value, use average resolve time. And then for the argument, what I wanna do is I wanna do issue type. Notice that what it's saying is that 21% of our time is spent on critical issues. Now, is that good or bad? Well, it means that we're spending less time on critical issues, which means that we're solving them faster. So indeed we are. But you know what? Let's go and let's see what we can find when we look at products as well. Now notice that when I drop product name as the series, you have several pie charts. 
for each uh, for each product. Let me let me move this over because I'm trying to get it to be vertical. For some reason, it's not. I want it to fit fit. I guess it's not going to fit for me, unfortunately. Wait, wait a minute. Maybe if I go like this, there you go. That's much better. Okay. So now notice, let me make this a little bit smaller. And let me change the name here to just resolution. Make things fit a little bit better. And there you go. Okay. That's looking much better. So here's our pie charts that are explaining how fast we are resolving things. Let's go to edit some mains here and let's talk about a priority. Priority resolution and we'll just we'll just resolution here and we'll hit okay. Let's go to layout and style and let's look at some some labels. Notice that we can have no labels or we can just have the argument or the percent. Notice that the tooltip, you can also have that in there. You can change them from pie to donut, and you can arrange them in columns or rows or auto arrange. Okay, there you go. Now what I'm going to do is I am going to do something that's going to seem a little crazy. I'm going to go over here and drop employee on there. Notice that what's going to happen is it's going to have a pie for each one of these people, which is too much. So let's go to data and let's do a drill down by series. Now look what happened. Now when I click on mobile, I can see how each particular employee did in the mobile space. Let's go to Windows 8. You can see that happened as well. Now, notice that I can drop the employee over here onto argument and instead do a drill down on arguments. So now I can say, okay, for all mobile normal issues, which employee, how are the employees doing on it? You see that? And so now for normal issues, notice that Susan Eaton handled 33% of them and Peng Wu handled 16% of them. Notice that all of the Silverlight normal issues are resolved by Kim Rawls. So it looks like the layout and style that that's really the data label we want is really the argument, right? Because that looks a little bit better for us. So let's go up one more and let's go to the urgent. Notice that all the ur urgent issues for Silverlight were resolved by Kim Rawls. So again, when we're looking at when we're looking at doing drill down, drill down works kind of the same way <clears throat> with uh, with all of the elements. Now, next what we're going to do is we're going to filter by arguments. And so now when I hit normal, notice that everything else is going to start to sort of filter down. So on, on, on urgent and critical, when it comes to urgent issues, it looks like everyone's really doing a good job. Not so much on critical. Now let's drill down. When we double click, notice that Kim Rawls is the only one showing up for normal, et cetera. Okay, very good. Let's, let's, hit, let's hit save and save this and let's escape the filtering and let's drill all the way back up. The next thing we wanted to ask is who asks the most questions? Okay, so let's, uh, let's go ahead and use a pivot style grid. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to, on the value, we're going to use the ID of the issue, but instead we're going to use the count, right? Because that's how many questions we're at, about 9.82. Again, notice that we're being very clever about showing you stuff. The, the idea is really three numbers is probably about the most that we can digest. And so what we've done is we've, we've gone ahead and created some sort of numerical way of, of representing things. Next, what we want to do is we want to pull the customer on the row side and we want to put the product on the column side. You know what? We don't want to do that. Let's take that out and let's put the, we want the issue type because we want to see how many issues are being asked on the column side. Again, notice that there's filtering engaged. That's why it's showing only that one. So when I turn it off, there you go, you can see that. And now what I want to do is I want to sort on issue type. But looks like critical, it's not really sorting in the right way, right? I wish I could, I wish I could sort it by 
the issue type. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to move the issue type index over to measure, sorry, over to dimension. Oh, I, I meant measure. I'm sorry. So measure, and I'm going to do, I'm just going to do an, an account or an average. It really doesn't matter. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort it by issue type index. And notice that what's happening is we're getting into this notion of data items, but the hidden data items. So when you want to sort on this, notice that, that when we look at the count, what we're going to do is we're going to show the ones with the least amount of tickets uh, or least amount of tickets. Right. So let me sort by descending. So notice that we have normal tickets are the most, then urgent, and then critical, which is about which is about right. Next, notice that we we only really want to show sort of not we really want to know who asked the most questions. We don't want to know all of them. So what we're going to do first is we're going to change the name so that it's uh, customers, uh, customer tickets, customer tickets. And uh, the count and hit OK. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over here and we're going to show only the top n. And we're going to show the top five and then we'll, we'll hit others and hit apply. So notice that these are the people that are asking the most questions. And then we have this sort of data item here just to sort of help uh, give us a, a range of how many, how many things other people are talking about. Okay, so let's go to data and let's go to filtering just so I can show you something else. Say you wanna pre-filter the data and we wanna only show Syed Abbas because we know he's the one that has the most. Notice that that particular type of filtering allows you to pre-filter the data as it comes in. But notice that there are only a couple of things that we can filter by. What if we want to filter by something else? What you can do is you can drop something onto the hidden dimensions. And now when we go to uh, the filtering, you can select a product name. So say we only want to know about WinForms and hit apply. Now this is customer WinForm tickets only. And you can see how that was done. So let's go to, let's go to clear to filter here and let's bring it back to what we want. The last question is, which products require the most support? Okay, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a card element. And let's see, where can I put it? I'll put it right there. I'll move this over and I'll move this up. Sorry, move this up so we have a little bit more space. And now what I'm going to do is I am going to do a product name on the series. And then I'm going to use the resolve time for actual, and we're going to do average, and I'm going to resolve time, target, average. Notice that less is good, and we're going to hit OK. So notice that the products, and now we need to sort it a little bit. So let's do a sort here. So we need to sort by the resolve time average and we want to do it by descending order, right? Okay, so it looks like overall, WinForms is taking the most amount of time. So let's go to edit names, and let's call, a product, let's call it product support. Again, you can, you can engage sort of master filtering, et cetera. Okay, let's save this, and let's call this our dashboard. Okay, and let me make sure it's saved, hit save, and now I can exit out. All right, so we built an entire dashboard and we answered some questions with the dashboards. Again, the questions were, how quickly do we answer support tickets? The next one was, how are our sending support engineers, and so on and so forth. So we did that. So now that we've done that, and we've spent a lot of time sort of working on these dashboards, let me show you how easy it is to actually make it work on the web. Uh, so uh, let me let me add one more thing, right? I, I forgot to add something. So let me go to open and let me go to support.xml and load that puppy up. 
let's put a title in there. So let's go to the dashboard and let's add a dashboard title. Visible, and this is going to be our support dashboard. Let's align it to the left. And let's load a picture. I, I think I have like a, let's see, I think I have a picture somewhere. Let me go to the normal demo and then images. There should be like a D, there it is, a devexpress.png. Ah, it's a little, it's not good there. So let's, let's go to the desktop here. And man, I wish I had a picture of it. There it is, branding. Logo pings. And let's do the 48. That's yeah, 48. Maybe, maybe we should go a little bit bigger, a little bit smaller there. Well, it looks the same to me. We'll just do that. Uh, it's a little blurry. So let's go to uh, this title and let's, Let's load up a bigger one. Let's do 48 and hit apply. There you go. That looks a little bit better. Dev Express support dashboard and let's hit save and then we're done. Okay. So let's hit stop and let's add the web project because now we want to add the web project. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to add and I'm going to hit new project and we're just going to do a blank ASP.NET web application, and let's call it our viewer. Very good. The next thing I'm going to do is I am going to add the existing dashboard file. So that's going to be support.xml. Let's look at that for a second. One of the things that you'll notice is right away is that the URL is bad. Right. We can't. We can't definitely use this. So let me go ahead and go add, and then let me do existing item, and let me go over to. I think it was here, and then it was branding, logo PNGs, and it was what logo color forty eight. So logo color forty eight PNG, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this out, right? Because it's just an XML file, and just use uh, relative paths. Very good. So that's in there. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new web form and let's call it the viewer. Okay, let me right click on this, set this as the startup page, right click, set this as the startup project. Where is that? Very good. And now let's build our dashboard viewer. To do that, let's go to the toolbox and let me just start typing in dashboard. And I'm going to drag on the dashboard viewer. Very good. Notice it put it in the right spot. Let's go to the design view. Notice that when I do that, it's going to start to add the references that we need. Very good. And it's also, it's also, it's important to note that it's also going to show us, it's also going to add the corresponding, uh, uh, oh, it just went out. It's also going to add the corresponding web doc config necessary elements. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to make sure that jQuery is registered. Next, I'm going to go to the properties of this, and I'm going to choose the dashboard XML file, and it's going to be support.xml, and then I'm going to hit OK. Next, we're going to make sure that it, it kind of, notice that it's 600 by 800, but I'm going to use full screen mode because, again, this is for tablets. You want to show the whole thing, and I think that's it. Let's run it and see what happens. Let me bring this over here. Loading. There is the dashboard. And again, this is the same dashboard that we created before. Uh, notice that I can click on urgent and everything changes. I can scroll down and look at this uh, priority resolution. You recall that was in there. Let's, let's drill up and let's clear the filtering. Remember, this guy was drilled down also. Notice Gail Erickson apparently only works on web form stuff. Uh, and there's urgent. You see how, I mean, this is, to me, this is really powerful, right? What we've been able to do is we've been able to answer all of the important questions really quickly and really easily. Well, this is a little too small, so there, there you go. And notice that, that, that we have some really powerful visualizations behind that. So again, the, the visualization part is the part that is actually going to be used by your customers. So really, the, the customer really is not going to customize this. 
but you are. And you can create any number of dashboard files. You can load them up. Uh, in fact, one of the problems that, that seems to happen is, for example, let me go to the support.xml. Notice it's using it's using integrated security. Ruh -ruh, right? That might not work. This is working only because I'm running in Cassini. And what I mean by, by Cassini is that this, where's that little, there. The, I'm sorry, IIS Express, and that uses my password. What if, what if I want to do something else, right? What if, it, what if, what if I want to use a different connection string? So let me go to the uh, the viewer here. Let me go to split. Did I hit stop? Yeah. Let me go to design mode, and let's go to properties, and let's select. Hold on. Where did the viewer go? Let me make sure we stopped. Let me take this off for a second. For some reason, it's not showing up on the screen. So let's go to design mode. There it is. I don't know why it wasn't showing up. So I'm going to go to this guy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the uh, custom data connection event. And I'm going to show you what happens so you can actually change the connection. Let me go back to the viewer. And let me make, go back to make sure that it's on full screen because that's what we wanted. Full screen. And let's hit run. <clears throat> So remember, remember that it was using SSPI before, which is not good. But notice that we have this, this e, e thing here. Let me go to Quick Watch. You can see that we have this ability to change the connection parameters. So notice for us, this is going to be, uh, what type of parameters is it? There. It's MS SQL connection parameters, and we can change them. So let me let me uh, copy, and let me do this. Let me hit stop, and let me say uh, var uh, parameters equals e dot connection parameters as this guy, right? And I'm going to say if uh, parameters does not equal null. Right, then we, then it's it's a it's a good casting, and so I'm going to say parameters dot, and let's change the authorization type to SQL Server because we don't want to use SPI. Then we're going to use our uh, username is the SA guy, which is me. Then I'm going to say parameters. Okay, now don't. I'm going to write my password in here, but please don't. Okay, I don't want anyone to use it. I think that's it. If it's not it, then I'll have to change it, and that's it parameters dot that's it and so now notice that I'm able to uh, change my authorization type on the fly because what's going to happen is you're going to run into this problem where it's going to be like I can't get any data and it's going to be like okay for example right now you can see that I didn't get any data it's because this password's wrong it's a capital P so let me F5 it again and let's see if this works it better work. There you go. See that? And so now notice that the, I, I guess I'm glad it kind of, I didn't write the right password because you saw that if it comes out empty, it's because it's using SSPI, integrated security, instead of the actual, uh, instead of the actual, um, you know, direct password. And so there, there notice that I've, I've actually used direct SQL Server authentication by doing this little cool event. Okay, so that's it. I, I've shown you everything uh, having to do with dashboards and visualizing them on the web. Hopefully that was informative. Okay, Amanda, any questions? Um, yeah, one second. Let's see, can I have multiple data sources assigned to the dashboard? Oh, that's a really good question. Uh, multiple data sources, absolutely. So let me, let me do this. Let me, oh, I don't want to run Google Chrome. Oops, so let me stop this. Let me hit stop here. Let me go back to the dashboard project here and let me set this as the startup project and let me run it. Let me show you something real quick. Uh, multiple data sources is an important thing. So let me add our analysis data source. Let me hit next. And let me uh, drop down to analysis. Let me hit next. Let me choose support. By the way, when you, wait, let me hit finish. So notice we have the analysis data source. Let's add a quick chart. We want to have a customer and ID, how many, uh, how many tickets they've asked, and let's do a little chart like this. 
And just for good measure, nah, let's just leave it like that. No, this is too much data. So let me do something a little bit easier. This is how many tickets we have for this. Let's choose a bar chart. Let's hit OK, and let's, uh, let's rotate it so it looks like that. OK, now let me add another data source. Let me go to data source, and let me do north wind. Let me hit next. Uh, yeah, no, I need to create a new connection. So new connection, let's choose the down north wind. Let me hit next. And let me choose the orders view and hit finish. Now notice I can create a new chart, but I can use the actual order. So for example, let me do order ID as a count, and let me choose product name as an argument. And let me go to the data, let me go to the layout, and let's use this chart. So notice that right away I've been able to create a dashboard that actually has multiple data sources. In addition to that, notice that you can enable what is called cross data source filtering. In other words, if you want a filter that it pulls from one particular data source and applies to another, you just enable that and then that will work. So yes, indeed we can and do have multiple the support for multiple data sources. Good question. All right, Amanda, any other questions? Yeah, um, how does master detail type of data work? Master detail type of data. So one of the things that's important is since this, this works like in an OLAP type setting, what's going to happen is the data has to come in flattened. And you know, like for example, when you're creating a star schema in preparation to do OLAP in order to bring it into a cube, you have to sort of semi-flatten. So notice that this particular data set has been flattened. So if you want to do master detail type stuff, let me go ahead and remove this. What I'm going to do is on the arguments, I am going to pull employee. And notice that there's like a master with product name, detail with employee. What you do is you just go ahead and do a drill down. So master WPF, detail, employee. And so just drill it down. And so if your data is in a master detail sort of way, you're going to have to project it into a flat data source. Let me show you how to do that. So let's go to the edit data source. Notice that when you're in the data source, you actually have, well, no, let me go to edit the data source of the actual, hold on one second. Let me hit edit data source. Notice that on the edit data source, you can actually, uh, you can actually, change the SQL view. So let me let me restart this because I want to I want to show you something maybe with uh, I want to show you something with with from the beginning how to flatten a master detail. So let me go new data source and let's go north wind and let me hit next. Let me choose the north wind database. Let's hit next. Next let me choose uh, products and categories. Scroll up products and categories. Let me hit open designer. Notice that when I choose them, I can actually do the flattening beforehand and do some really sort of really neat ways of interjoining, right? And so master detail, if your data is in a master detail way, then you can just use our tool to bring the data in that way. You can flatten it through the query designer. Great question. So again, notice that you can you can do the master detail on the conceptual side with drill down, and you can do the master detail on the data pool side with the query designer. Great question. All right, next question. Uh, do you have an option to export the dashboard to Excel? Good question. Let me uh, let me open up my. The answer is no, and the reason why is because it's better that you export the data rather than the pictures, but we do make up for it in other ways. So let me let me hit no here. And let me let me load up this guy and notice that you can export the dashboard by selecting and again this is in the designer. It's better it also it also exists in the viewer. But if you if you go here you can export the individual item or you can export I'm sorry, you can export the entire dashboard or the individual item. So let me go to export to PDF. And let me hit save. 
And let's open that up here. Oh, let me bring up the file explorer. Let's go to desktop and notice that we have our PDF right here, support dashboard. There you go. Uh, cancel. There you go. There is the dashboard in all of its glory inside of a PDF document. Okay, so no, and the reason why is because it would be better to use our document server to export the flat data that's in there. So hopefully that answers your question. All right, any other questions? Uh, yeah, what is the best way to change the layout so that it changes to the size and orientation of each device? So right away what's going to happen is uh, this so let me let me run it because that's a really good question. Uh, let me go to the Solution Explorer and let me hit this as the startup project. Hold on one second. Let me show you what's going to happen. Unfortunately, I can't show this on a device because I, it's it's hard to. Uh... So so notice that that it will automatically sort of try to fit itself on its own. You see that. And so that the reason why this works is because this is all pure HTML5. In fact, if you look at this, you can see that we have a table in there. Or, well, there's the, the, the actual item. This is all, we're using tables for table items. We're using divs for, actually, let me go to the, let me go to the actual, this guy. So let me hit on the spec element. Notice we're using pure SVG. It's, it's really HTML5. And so it will automatically sort of, fit itself the best that it can. Again, in the orientation that you had it. A, a good suggestion might be to change orientation. Uh, we'll definitely look into that. Great question. Any other questions? Yes. What data providers can be used? For example, IBM iSeries DB2. Good question. Let's go to, uh, let's, let's stop this and let this set this up as a startup project so I can show you. So very good. Run it. By the way, these are all great questions, great questions. Uh, there it is. Notice that when we hit new data source, uh, let me just zoom in here. We really, we really go at it pretty powerfully. So Oracle is definitely in there down to a, an XML file, to be quite honest with you. And, and to be quite honest, you can also bind this to a series of objects. So if you can pull data from anywhere and put a shit to a bunch of objects, then it's really that easy to actually get it out into the dashboard. All right, any other questions? Yes. Um, are you planning on an ASP.NET interface for creating a dashboard? Great question. Obviously, I would love to have it, but that is something that we still need to discuss with the development team. I'm for it. I, I think it'd be great, but there's a series of issues, right, that, that come along with it that, that we need to resolve. Great question. All right, any other questions? I see Suresh I had a follow-up. Uh, export to Excel, is that something we can expect in the future? Uh, because grid export doesn't make sense in a PDF and image. Uh, well, to be quite honest with you, you can use today, let me, let me show you. Uh, devexpress.com front slash Seth. Uh, there is a blog post that I did not very long ago. Let's see here. Holy cow, maybe it was a long time ago. Ooh. If you want to export your data to a spreadsheet, really, here's me creating a spreadsheet in like a couple of lines. Notice that this is instantiating it, this is saving it, and this is really just the making data. And so really, if you want to export the data, you can trap events and literally export that the data out to a spreadsheet. Uh, now, if you want to export just the, the grid data, yeah, we, we, we'll definitely look into that. Uh, but if you want to export the whole thing, then, okay, I think I, I know what you're saying now. Let me hit stop. You're saying, uh, let's go to the Team Explorer. Let's hit this as the startup project again. Sorry to be going back and forth. I think what he's saying is, uh, he's saying, oh, let me let it load up. 
you're saying I want to export this grid to uh, to grid itself out to a spreadsheet. That, that makes sense. Notice that you can export PDF to image, but if you want to do individual items to a grid, I, I don't see that as being unreasonable. And so that's definitely something I'll, I'll look into. Please send me an email, and I'm, I'm happy to, to look into that. All right, Amanda, any other questions? Yeah, is there a viewer for Mobile.js? This is the viewer for Mobile.js, right? Th this viewer uses an ASP.NET sort of background engine, but this is all HTML5 JavaScript. This is using our, our JavaScript sort of, these are our, our SVG charts. When you, when you look at uh, Chart.js, uh, which is our mobile stuff, that's what we're actually using to do that. It's just using ASP.NET as the background to pull it up. Any other questions? Yep. Are there any line controls in the dashboard designer? Uh, no line controls. I don't. I don't know why. I guess I don't see a reason why. But if you have a really good use case, yeah, let me know. I'd love to. I'd love to know. I'd love to see why that would be useful. Right. Any other questions? Um, is it okay to directly connect with Oracle DB as the data source? Yeah. In fact, notice that what I. What what I showed before, when we're loading up, as we're loading up the dashboard, uh, here it is. Okay, there it is. Notice that when I hit new, you can connect directly to Oracle if you want, and when you do, it's going to have a username and a password, and it's going to create everything you need to do that. Also, again, it, we're we're very clever about what's going to happen. Like if you're using VistaDB, it's going to be different. SQLite's the same, or if you have a really a custom connection string. In the back end, let me, let me show you what we're doing in the background so that you know why we can sort of show all these things simultaneously. We are using in the back end, we're using XPO to connect. And so under fundamentals, you can see the database engines that are supported are really, that's why we can do it. So these database systems, also work. Uh, so these are all sort of, we're using XPO in the background. You remember you actually, you actually saw that here. You can see the XPO connection string right here at the top. So that's why we can connect to all those things, but we're using XPO. And so, yeah, you can directly connect to Oracle using XPO. All right. Any other questions? <coughs> Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Ugh. Um, we had a question about, are there video tutorials on your website for slow guys to learn step by step? And I am posting the, we have you a know what? YouTube playlist. What? So let me, let me see. DevExpress.com. I don't know if it's there yet, but yes, I saw that that was important. Ah, it's not there yet. This, this is actually going to change and all right. I'll, okay. Since we're all friends here. By the way, write down my, my stuff if you want to get a hold of me, because I'm gonna I'm gonna escape this now. This card. Let me go and show you. Uh, yes, we're gonna have something like this. And I made all of these videos right here. Well, not me. Amanda and I and our video production team made this. <laughs> and so yes, you're gonna have all of this stuff available. I don't know when they're gonna get it up on the site. Hopefully soon, right? Yes, I mean they're any time now. But I just posted a link in the uh, chat box to everyone to oh. the playlist on YouTube of all of those videos. Hey, now there's a playlist. Yeah. What? Look at that goodness. Yeah. So you're not slow. I just went fast because I only have an hour. But we, I literally go through every single last. Thing. Oh look, there's I didn't do this one, but this is a this is a new one that we can connect directly to OLAP, which is quite cool. <laughs> Looks like titles, I missed that one too. So that's great. I was gonna do those. Looks like they were done. How nice of me. How nice of them to let me do that. Okay. Any other questions? Already taken care of, Seth. Already taken care of. Nice. Um, let's see. Um, I don't think you got to this one while I was searching on YouTube. Uh, did you do, do you have any limitation with regards to the D database records to connect and use it on the dashboard? Any as limitation? far as size? No. But
But again, uh, if you're if you're trying to pump billions and billions and billions of records, it, obviously it's going to be a little bit slower. So as far as size limitations, technically there is none. It's really the pipe, and also how fast and how much RAM there's in your server. Because remember, if you're not using OLAP, what's going to happen is we're going to be doing all these calculations on the server side in memory, and so that's kind of not good, right? But if you're using OLAP, those problems should go away. It's a great question. And then the Any last one. Question? Okay, yeah, good. Yeah, one more. Um, also on the grid, we have a lot of unbound expression columns. Is that something you guys implement in the coming future? So if he means unbound columns, I, I'm not quite sure what he means by that. So hopefully, hopefully he can clarify because I'm not quite sure what he means by unbound col expression columns. Okay, so if he wants to do expressions, that's a great question. There's, there's, we don't have expressions right now, but there, that doesn't mean you, you can't do it. So let me go here, let me open the query designer, and let's go to SQL view, and let's do, uh, let's, let's select this, this plus 3.14159 because it's, because I'm, to be honest, I'm, I'm hungry, and I thought of pi. And so that's pi right there. And let's say as pi ID. ID, boom, let's hit preview results. Do you see that? So even though we don't have expressions built in currently, that doesn't mean that you can't do it, right? You can do it through SQL expressions. And so again, that's a great suggestion. We don't have that quite yet as far as on the UI. But you know what? You can definitely do it through the SQL design view. So there you go. Hope that answers your question. All right, Amanda, I think that's almost all of it. That's everything. Booyah. I turn it over to you, my friend. Awesome. Uh, thank you. Um, visit devexpress.com slash webinars for any upcoming webinar session. And again, thanks to Seth for presenting. And of course, thank you all for all the questions and for joining us. And let us know your thoughts on dashboards and on our latest release of 13.1 at either, you can email Seth at sethj at devexpress.com. You can email me at amandac at devexpress.com or even to the bigwigs at management at devexpress.com. And let us know what you think. All right, everybody, thank you. And that's it. Bye-bye.